Okay, students, you have watched the video on the tools that you'll need. So the next step is you're going to have to design your actual project. So what you are doing is you are essentially creating a stamp. And that stamp, you're going to put ink on it, and you're going to actually print it. So you have to be thoughtful about how things turn out. The stamp I cut here, um, I removed the negative space, leaving the positive space. The positive space in this case is the lettering itself. And I'm removing that area around the lettering. This does take time. This is not a fast process. Um, there are little areas where sometimes you mess up. So like down here in this O, you can see this white area I accidentally cut through right here. And it's just part of the process. Um, it's part of getting used to it. So um, you want to have enough ability to go in and change your design if you accidentally cut through something that's really important. So this is one example. And rubbed it up with ink. Actually, rubbed this up with ink, laid this down on top, and rubbed the back of it, and created the stamp that way. This was with an ink pad, um, so it wasn't as clear and clean as I like it to be, but it worked for what I needed it. Um, I made a little tiny stamp. My daughter and I worked on making Christmas cards together last year. And so I have a stamp with J and L Harwood, or J and L H for J and, um, Julie and Lily Harwood. Um, and once again, it has to be in reverse. So re reverse is hard. It's hard to think about. Um, this is an example right here. Um, where the letters were in reverse. Um, I kind of like the placement of my little hedgehog guy here um, a little bit better than when it was over here. And I don't have an example of this one printed out. But this is my design that I wanted to do, kind of a alternative take once a zillionth time um, on Starry Night. So this is the Christmas card that I think I want to do this year. So I am double double using my idea, um, kind of altered it around. Now, I drew on here the outline of how my block fit, and it's probably just a little bit big. I'm kind of lining this up like this. I'm going to flip this up on the side, and I'm going to lay it down. And I'm going to make sure that it looks like it's lined up. be good. And so on this side, so what I'm doing is called a graphite transfer. Taking my soft pencil, putting it on the back of my picture, or putting it on the back side. Graphite transfers work two different ways. I'm taking the graphite on the front of my picture right now and transferring it right on my block. Another option, if you want it to print in reverse, is coloring the back side like this, laying the block under here and tracing on top of it. Um, you don't have to do this only with printmaking. This works with anything. So if you do the most amazing drawing and you ruin the paper, you don't necessarily have to go back and redraw the entire thing again. What you can do is you can color the back of your drawing, or you can even get carbon paper. I don't know. Actually, I did see carbon paper at an artist supply store just recently. What I'm doing is just the graphite. You guys have all gotten graphite on your hands. This is just pushing the graphite onto a different surface. So I've colored the back of this. When I flip this up, I'm going to see some sort of, some version of my picture here. It's not perfect. I'm not really terribly worried about that. Um, what I'm going to do is just use my pencil, and I'm going to go back on here and just kind of fix her up. And I can change the the way she looks a little bit if I want to change the way she looks. Um, I'm going to 
gonna try to just come in here and clean this up. Now that I have this on here, I'm gonna have to make some artistic choices. One of the artistic choices I need to make is deciding which pieces are gonna be cut out, which pieces are gonna be, um, so which parts of this are gonna be the color of the ink and which parts of this are gonna be the color of the paper that I choose to print this on. So if I'm printing this on black paper and I'm using white ink and I have that kind of pre-planned, I can make that choice to cut out only areas that, you know, will be printed out white. So like, you know, I would leave the stars in here and I would actually um, clean out the background. And what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna print this with black or blue ink. So I'm gonna have to clean out the stars. I'm gonna have to clean out some of the backgrounds. I want my trees to print out dark. So my trees are going to be blue, black, or dark green. Um, so I'm going to leave them in here. Uh, this like little hill area down here, I want all of this to be white like it's snow. And so I have my moon shining down on my snow. And on my other one, I have my little hedgehog in the corner. And I do want to put my little hedgehog over here because he's cute and he's funny. And... It's my Christmas card, so I should have some member of my family on here. And so, a little chubby body. I'm going to give him his tail. I'm going to give him his snout. I'm going to give him his legs. I'm going to give him his ears. And then, um, so I'm going to carve around him, and he'll be a blob on there. And then I'll go back in and put his little spikes. I'll carve into his little spikes so that they show up and print out white. So that right there is the design process. Now, when I looked at the real story night, there's kind of this Milky Way thing happening here. So I'm going to carve out probably more of that. But then when you get up into the sky, it gets darker. So this is kind of the actual hill down here. Whoa. I have the noisiest kitchen table in the world. So what I'm going to do now that I have this kind of planned out, I do want my three trees to be separate. And I'm going to demonstrate cutting into there. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Okay. So once again, here's my gouge that I'm using. I want to make sure this spoon part, like the part that if you are scooping cereal out of the bowl, that's facing up. I want to make sure that this the smooth, rounded edge is the area that's facing down. I'm going to be using my bench hook, and I'm going to hook the bench hook over the edge of my table. Now, the problem is, is that my arm over here just a little bit. Oh, maybe not. So this right here, back it up. The lip of this is hooked over the side of my kitchen table. And now I'm going to slide this up. And this right here, pop up, that's going to become my extra hand. I'm going to take my block and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to zoom in. This right here is a cutting blade. If you're holding on to your block like this, which inevitably people do, and you start to carve into it, you will jab into your hand. You will jab into your hand. You might jab into your hands here, but generally right along here is where people get cut. And it hurts. It hurts really, really bad. Um, and then you bleed a lot because hand wounds always bleed a lot. So that's where this comes into play. This right here should be your hand. This right here is where the other hand goes. And this right here is what you do. Now, another thing for you to be aware of. I'm cutting away from me and heading up towards the top here. I'm 
pulling this out. I'm not gouging super, super, super deep. You just have to gouge just a little bit because when we use the brayer to roll ink on here, it's only going to stick to the top. It's not going to go into these little lines and these little grooves. If it does happen to go into those little lines and those little grooves, you can go back in and you can clean them out a little bit more. But the biggest problem that um, students run into is, is that they cut really, really deep and then they destroy the structural integrity of their block. Their block um, starts to fall apart. So I am barely cutting into here. And cleaning that out. Um, you see me kind of flipping this around. As such. So that I am always aiming my cutting tool away from my hands. If you do cut yourself at home and your parents get worried that I've given you a cutting tool, um, make them watch this video with you so that they realize that I am trying to teach you safety and that it was you that wasn't listening. Different um, cutting tools work different ways. I like the smaller you, um, not the smallest V. I like the middle sized U and the middle sized V um, the best. Those are generally the cutting tools that I use. Uh, the reason for that is, is that I can do a lot with them. Um, this one, because I do want to clean out some of the white down here. Yeah, I like that. You can really see that. Um, once again, I'm not cutting very deep at all. It's barely the little tiny corner that's really kind of catching into this and lifting it up. Um, so these hills I wanted to carve out to make them look like they were covered or like they were snow. Now, look at the examples of the pictures that I shared with you. There are certain limitations. This artwork leaves you very um, graphic looking. There are people that can get really, really high detail. But um, for your first one, leave it just more thoughtfully like a black and white graphic. Those of you that I spit colored ink home because I didn't have enough black ink, um, you can go ahead and when, when we get back into school, we can give you black ink to print from. You can also use, if you have um, anybody who does any kind of um, oh, print, oh, not print making, but stamping at home, they can, you can use a black ink pad and stamp it with a black ink pad. Uh, inevitably, somebody's going to ask, wait a minute, Ms. Harwood, you made that little teeny tiny one with, with your information on it and your daughter's information on it. Can we cut down one of our blocks? Well, I sent you home with two blocks. If you don't use the second one, I would love to have it back. If you do use the second one, that's totally fine. Um, I do want you to use them. And I don't want you to waste them. And I don't want you to find it like five years from now. And like, oh, yeah, I should have turned that back in. Because I can use it, but if you're going to use it, that would be completely awesome. Um, but you can just take a pair of scissors or whatever, cut them down smaller, or an exacto knife actually works better. You can cut them down smaller and make little tiny ones. So this right here is pretty much how I do this. Um, this area 
I do want to clean this out a little bit. Um, the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm actually going to follow the hill. And this is going to give me... I'm going to have a little bit of the texture when I go to print it, but not a lot. And it kind of is... Um, it'll, it'll have these real faint little stripes. And that looks really kind of cool sometimes. So when I cleaned out the background behind him, I had just cleaned out a little bit more to separate him, but I left these on there, and um, it just kind of made it a little bit more interesting. Once again, I don't know if you can see the edge of my thumbnail. So if I set this up, my thumbnails are not very long at all, and I'm just tucking them in just to show you the depth that I cut in very, 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 very little. I could take this and I could cut on the back. It's not cut very deep. And I could do a second one on the back of here. Um, but I have kind of glue got on there. And so that's not a smooth, it's going to be a difficult thing to actually print off of. So this is where I'm at. I'm going to continue cutting this. And then in a few minutes, I'll go ahead and demonstrate printing so you know what to do with there. But this is the start.